Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. You know who it is. And uh, yeah, we're going to go through another episode of reviewing your music. I have gone to social media. I have asked viewers of the show to submit songs that they have made. And uh, let's let's give them a shot. Let's give them a, a try and uh, see see what exactly you guys creatively are uh, are cooking with on on this one this time around. Uh, let's go. Wee! All right, I'm gonna go with this one first over here. Uh, our our buddy over here, rare rare Rashad, rare Rashad, uh, who uh, uh, has a song over here titled Eleanor. I love you on SoundCloud production Rashad with lots of dollar signs. Uh, he says, listen to this, Mr. Mellon. I will. Let's, let's give it a try. Let's give it a shot and see what a rare Rashad is, is doing. <laughs> Okay, there's the track. Now that I see the full credits, it seems that uh, the, the track is actually named after an artist by the name of uh, Justine and Rashad, our friend here, Rashad, has just uh, done the production on it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I wasn't too crazy about this track. I think there's some admirable elements to it. It's got kind of a lazy, chilled out beat, a cute bedroom pop aesthetic to it. A uh, very summery, wavy vibe that's really sweet and endearing. Um, you know, I, I think the, the best qualities to it were really mostly just aesthetic. Um, wasn't super crazy about the vocal performance, though. I thought some of the synth bass lines sounded a little awkward, like maybe hit some notes that, um, you know, weren't, weren't fitting into the instrumental all that well. And um, I think the progression of the song was a little underwhelming, too. Uh, again, I think you guys hit like a really good vibe on this one, but like as far as a song... It wasn't really um, memorable, sort of like on the tune and melodic side of things. So, I mean, aesthetically, I think there are a lot of good qualities here, you know. Uh, but again, the, the songwriting aspect to it and um, some of the compositional elements of the instrumental as well as the vocal performance, I, I think all could have been could have been a lot better. OK, this next one comes from Chuck Sutton and uh, it says Sidewalk, Chuck's theme. It's on SoundCloud. Um, listen to Chuck is this person's Twitter handle. Uh, let's, uh, let's just give it a shot and see what's going on. Sidewalk, Chuck's, Chuck's theme. Oh, I'm gonna stop it right there. Chuck, damn Chuck, damn Chucky boy, damn Chuck Chuckman, damn Chucker Chuckerson, god damn Chuck. That's a, that's a banger and a half. And, you know, I don't, I don't mean to sort of um, just boil your track down to a banger, but Jesus Christ, this is a great track. This is a great bit of production over here. This is like, you know, everything Brain Feeder has been like building up to for years, but pushed a, a, like a decade into the future. I uh, love the jazzy leads. Love some of the weird rhythmic stops throughout the song, which I thought were pretty invented, inventive and totally unexpected. Um, I loved the way that you kind of treated the vocals, although I do wish they were mixed and, and sort of uh, pumped into the track in a way where they were just like a little bit brighter, a little bit louder. I think they could have um, popped a bit more in comparison with everything else. Uh, loved some of the chord progressions you worked into here, uh, just like some of the weird sonic tricks and bells and whistles you worked in around the, the groove as well. Like this is a really creative piece of hip hop, electronic, glitchy, infused jazz future. My, my, my brain still is like working through the flu at the moment. So like all the words aren't coming to my mind, but this was great. This is great, Chuck. I'm I'm saving your SoundCloud, Chuck, for a later a later time, because I don't want to uh, miss out on anything else that you're doing. Because that is really that is really good. I'm following Chuck as well, giving Chuck a follow. Chuck Sutton, thank you, Chuck Sutton. That was Sutton else, Chuck. That was really good. That was a good theme. That was a really good sidewalk, Chuck theme. God damn.
All right, let's move on to the next one. Which one will I pop into next? Which one will I pop into next? Which one will I pop into next? Um, uh, what's kind of grabbing me? What's jumping out at me? Uh, hit or miss meme, no thank you. <laughs> All right, this this uh, this person, Lauren Tay, says this one, Anthony, this one. Okay, well, I guess it will have to be this one then. Uh, again, Lauren Tay sending me this. Uh, Slow Stabbin is the name of the track. I think it's on Spotify. It says it's by Fathom Nineteen. Let's uh, give this track a shot. <laughs> Uh, okay, all right. We're gonna have to um, put put in a stop to that. The um, that I don't know. That was that was kind of rough. This is very 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 rough. Uh, pretty much every aspect about it that I could bring up is is kind of rough. I mean, the, the most obvious of all of it is is definitely the performance aspect of it. Like the uh, rhythm guitars are not really as on as like a rhythm guitar should be. Um, the bass and the drums work together pretty decently. However, uh, there were a lot of moments where it was kind of like the drummer was insisting on kind of overkilling the, the bass drum in such a way where it really wasn't enhancing the groove of the track. Like maybe you could get away with this much bass drum if you were working it into like a metal song or like a death metal song or something like that. But uh, uh, in the case of a track like this, where you're kind of working in some alternative rock and like some reggae and some funk, I just don't really think it did uh, the groove and uh, the vibe of the track all that much justice. And uh, then there's the the vocals. I did not care for the vocalist at all. Like the way that he was kind of shouting and straining throughout the entire track in a way that I, I think that he thought was soulful or something. Yeah, I did not get into this one bit. And you know, I, I know that there are some elements of this track that, hey, you know what, it's just not my cup of tea. It's just not my thing. I'm never gonna like it because of that. But if this is a sound and this is a song that you're really, really, really married to. And like, this is the way you want to go forward. And this is the type of music you want to make. If that's your dream, that's totally fine. But if that's the case, you've got to get back into the studio or wherever it was that you made this and get a tighter recording down because this is not a very tight recording at all. Like it's, it's very messy performance. Like the bass, the drums, the guitars, they do not form all that tightly. Like, you can't have everybody individually kind of riffing and embellishing without any regard for how it sounds to the rest of the tune. You've got to be listening and playing in such a way where you're aware of what each other is doing. You've got to be playing together. Um, so, yeah, you've got to get a tighter and a better recording down here. Uh, if, if this is really the song and the sound that you want to present, uh, because with a with a performance this rough, it's it's not gonna happen. All right, let's find another one, let's find another one. Uh, <laughs> this song over here looks interesting. We just released our debut album a couple of days ago. Here's a song from it. Uh, Biomes is the name of the group I'm imagining, and Spinach is the name of the track. I do like uh, some spinach being a vegan myself, so uh, let's give spinach a try. <laughs> Okay, I mean, look, guys, it's it's a pretty decent track. Um, I don't dislike it. Uh, I think the direction that you're going in is kind of admirable here. You're uh, obviously pulling from, uh, you know, a math rock influence, but you're not trying to go so flashy that it becomes masturbatory. You're trying to keep, like, the original punk spirit of math rock intact. Um, you know, but but here's the thing, like... I feel like if this is the direction you're going to go in, you've either got to bring uh, sort of the technical aspect of it higher so that there is a bit more flash to it, uh, because in a way it does feel kind of plain to the point where you might want a vocal in there at some point. I would even recommend experimenting with some sounds and effects and, and that sort of thing, because the, the 
mix is kind of dry at this point, you know, and, and maybe taking this sound in a way that's uh, maybe even psychedelic might might do something. I don't know. I'm just sort of throwing ideas out there. But as as of right now, uh, the recording is pretty clean. The performance is tight as hell. Um, but I think to kind of justify the length of song that you're providing here and also, uh, you know, the instrumental direction that you're going in here, uh, there's got to be a bit more flash on the instrumental. Um, now, I think there are ways of doing that where you don't sort of go down the rabbit hole of technical wankery and uh, become completely unappealing and soulless. Uh, but, you know, I, I would say try to turn the technicality up and, um, you know, do it in, in such a way where you're not uh, uh, losing that energetic, punky rock appeal uh, that you obviously want to keep in your music, uh, which you're obviously displaying in your music. Again, sorry for the weird wording, flu head. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, th I think what you've put together here is is, is pretty admirable. Uh, we just, I guess, love to see it uh, get more ambitious from either a compositional front or maybe even like a, a sonic auditory front, I guess. Moving on to another one. Moving on to another one. Oh, melon, oh, sweet. I bring poetry to you. Also my song, LOL. Tokyo, a song by Ghost King is Dead on Spotify. Oh, well, let's, uh, let's give it a try. Let's give it a shot. Ghost King is Dead. So we can dance around chalk outlines of a man that I killed to change. Um, I, I like the track that you're bringing here a lot. Uh, I like the tune of it. I like the moody style that you're going for. I like the spoken word uh, bits that kind of serve as the verses of the track. Uh, I like the chord progression as well. Uh, I think there are a lot of great things going on with what you're putting together here. What is the most obvious shortcoming of this track, and I know that a lot of musicians don't emphasize this sort of thing when they should because they see it as the, the least fun part of the creative process, but it really is the mixing. The mixing, the volume adjustments, the EQ, because there are points where the keyboards are really pitchy and like ear-piercingly loud in comparison with everything else in the mix because the volume jump from the keyboards to everything else is so huge, it's so gigantic. Um, you, you've really got to put the sounds into the multi-track and then from there, look at mixing and EQing as you taking the sound and sculpting it so that it fits into the overall portrait that you're creating. That's why mixing is important. Okay. The, the, clearly what you've put together here is not very well mixed. And, and as I've said before in previous episodes of this, you know, we, we go into these episodes kind of expecting that that's going to be the case because these are independent releases. These are DIY releases. So, you know, that's that's whatever. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to single this project out as like, oh, you're really bad at mixing because, you know, but most people when they're starting out have issues with mixing or don't understand what it is. But, um, you know, let me just use this again as an opportunity to emphasize that mixing is important. Mixing your songs is important. Uh, properly EQing the sounds that you have in your songs is important because, I mean, as chilled out and as low key and as serene as this track is, uh, the fact that you do have so many sounds in the mix here that, you know, kind of pop and ugh, just uh, sound very sour on the eardrums because of the way that they've been kind of placed into uh, the track and have been properly EQed, it does really ruin the serenity of the track. I guess I would say there was maybe even like a little bit of a Destroyer or uh, a King Cruel vibe going on on the track, which I, I thought was kind of cool and uh, admirable. I don't think the track you've pulled together here sounds all that rough. I think if it were mixed better, uh, it could serve as a pretty effective piece of a very moody, wordy, poetic bedroom pop. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep moving on. Dug this track. Uh, quite a bit, just thought it could have been mixed better. All right, let's try this next one, A Noonday by State of Suffering. From the album Bow or Bow to Fate. Sounds dark. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Well, that was a great one minute and 25 seconds. Um, state of suffering. I, I'm going to preemptively uh, 
follow, bam, uh, XXX, Boise Hardcore, bow to fate. Okay, the, the Boise Hardcore scene is alive and well. Just letting all y'all know, the Boise Hardcore scene, I know I've been getting lots of emails saying, hey man, you don't, you don't cover enough music out of the Boise hardcore scene. I've been like, you know, man, I know there are just way too many artists coming out of there these days to follow all of it. But, you know, here, here's me. Here's me talking about the Boise, the Boise hardcore scene. And it's, it seems like they have a pretty decent band in, uh, in State of Suffering over here. Um, the performance of this track was absolutely animalistic. Uh, the vocals were pretty badass, even if they uh, were not the most distinct that I have ever heard. I uh, thought the transitions from one passage of the track to the next were pretty um, fast, pretty smooth, very well executed. Uh, thought the riffs were super chunky and uh, catchy at some points. I think that the mix could have been a bit thicker and could have used more bass. Um, the guitars were super crunchy, and I think uh, some bass would have added a bit more girth and smoothness to the overall sound of the uh, the song that, uh, you know, could have made it even more pummeling, even heavier, um, even more overwhelming. There were some elements of it that reminded me of power violence stuff, of like nails stuff, um, of the kind of, a, you know, metal infused hardcore that you would hear like uh, dudes like Kurt Ballou attached to. Um, the cover art leaves me feeling like I'm just like, uh, looking, looking at a bad, edgy high schoolers drawing, <laughs> but, um, but still I thought the, uh, the performance and, and the tune itself were pretty great. Um, straight out of the Boise, uh, hardcore scene. That was a pretty badass cut. Not really any huge critiques of it outside of, um, you know, I, I think they could do a little bit more to kind of separate themselves from other groups shooting for a similar sound and, uh, more, more bass, more heaviness, uh, in the mix a little bit going forward. But, uh, but still as, as of, as of right now, it's, it sounds pretty good. All right. I'm going to give one more a shot. Uh, okay. What is this gel? The digital dream girl thunder forever angel, um, on SoundCloud. Okay. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a taste. Let's see what's happening. All right. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really have a lot to say about this cut other than it just sounded like a, a mishmash of some just general PC music influence, some Sophie influence, little Charlie XCX mixed in there too. Uh, very glitchy, very aggressive, just kind of another sampling of what we're seeing in this current trend of uh, pop and electronic music where you have a lot of these very abrasive and post-industrial sounds being worked in a uh, very short piece of production as well at like one minute and 38 seconds. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. It, it just sort of seemed like a, uh, I wouldn't say a watered down version of those things, but it was definitely not as cleanly executed in comparison as, as those things. I think the uh, the mixing and the progressions between the various sections of, of this track were a little rough and kind of abrupt. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure what else to say about it outside of that. I mean, I would probably go more into some of the details of the track if I felt like the cut exemplified ideas and influences that were outside of those things that I just mentioned a few seconds ago, but I, I, I don't think it does. I mean, for sure, it takes uh, quite a bit of talent to be able to emulate the sounds that have been emulated here and execute them in such a way where you could maybe convince me that this is like a, a demo or something coming from one of those artists or that PC music camp that I mentioned earlier. Um, but uh, I think from here, what's going to need to happen is you got to find a way to put your own spin on this stuff because this just literally sounds like a takeoff of that without much in the way of a unique style or even a memorable composition uh, as, you know, you just kind of cut out prematurely at 1 minute 38 without really kind of building up much tension or giving the audience uh, much in terms of resolve or a payoff or anything. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, this has been another episode of uh, reviewing your music. Thank all of you for watching. 
Uh, thank you for sitting through me and my flu head, my sick head. Hopefully I kind of made sense for the most part throughout this entire thing. And uh, we will catch you guys in the next one. You're the best, you're the best, you're the best. Uh, Anthony Fantano, reviewing your music uh, forever.